Hey guys, Paul here checking in with you again for another one of our Vita vlogs. Today is day 13 of the Vita challenge, Saturday morning, uh, at least here in the uh, area of Canada land where I live. And I have joining me from halfway across the world for a gaming session today and as well just to star in our vlog, the Dave that you all know and love. Hello, I'm not sure if you know and love me very much, but uh, I'm glad to be here. <laughs> Dave's been playing with us in the Shogun 2 Total War series since pretty much the channel's inception. He was uh, our first guest star and our longest running guest star. Now I have a question for you, Paul, because you're supposed to vlog every day in April. Technically, part of this vlog is coming from tomorrow there. Um, yes, I still need to do a vlog tomorrow. I have to do a vlog once per 24-hour segment once per calendar day and although you're from the future my video won't be posted in the future yes it's, if uh, i post it in the future then it won't be posted today yeah so it's 10 o'clock in the morning there it's actually 12 20 p.m here or a.m sorry here yeah so while we do these gaming sessions i wake up as ridica early as i can dave pulls an all-nighter and a lot of caffeine is involved yeah, sometimes it's the other way around, um, depending on daylight savings time and that kind of stuff. So I'll be up early in the morning, and it'll be evening time where Paul is, but yeah. Anyways, uh, a few things... Go ahead, Dave. <laughs> a few things that we wanted to talk about today. Um, since we're both um, kind of big uh, real-time and turn-based strategy players, we wanted to talk about how... The RTS and turn-based strategy kind of genre is really unsung in the gaming world. And I'm sure there are a lot of gamers like us that really love those types of games. Um, but they seem to fade into obscurity pretty quickly. Um, and if you're like me and looking for an online game in a game like Shogun or Age of Empires or, you know, some of the more obscure um, titles, um, it's a little bit more difficult to do. Now... I, I agree with you, Dave. They do tend to fall off the radar pretty quickly. XCOM Enemy Unknown has been in the bargain bins, and it's been out less than a year. And it's a great game. It got great reviews coming out of the hop. It just drops fairly quickly. I think a lot of the reason for that is probably just the amount of hype that first-person shooters get, and even RPGs get, where that hype can only be spread so far. Yeah. Um... It might be a bit of a marketing thing, I think, um, where it's hard to market something that is so involved to someone. Um, I mean, Blizzard does it well with StarCraft. Um, StarCraft, as far as real-time strategy, obviously one of the biggest games in the world, so they do it well. Um, even with World of Warcraft and MMOs and stuff like that, they manage to market it, you know, um, because people are ready to undertake that. But I think with like games like Shogun, XCOM... Age of Empires, um, that kind of level of the genre, even Command and Conquer now, um, people don't want to invest that kind of time because they're not convinced that they should. I think that's what it is. I think the other thing is these games, while they do end up bargain binning pretty quickly, um, a lot of their followers are pretty loyal followers. So they may not feel the need to advertise as much and put as much hype into it because the people who play these games are the ones that are watching for the games to come out and already know the release date long before it's announced. Well, not before it's announced, before it occurs, even when there's no real marketing. But you're right, I can't remember the last time I've seen a commercial on television about any form of RTS or strategy game. Save for StarCraft 2. Yes, you're right, save for StarCraft 2, which Blizzard does do a lot of marketing. Yeah, I think that's probably why they're one of the bigger bigger punchers in the uh, in the whole games industry is because they do actually put a lot into their marketing a lot of thought a lot of time and most importantly I guess a lot of money as well yeah they put their money where their mouth is and then they use it to talk their business <laughs> <laughs> or if it's EA they use it to spew their golden turd <laughs> <laughs> yeah I like, uh, it was a little bit surprising to me to hear that EA had actually won the Golden Turd again. Um, but you have to realize, you know, people who are into that kind of thing, into the voting and that, they're 
probably a little bit more likely to how do I put it they're they're more likely to vote on things they care about so um, the internet obviously is a great place for gamers to get into the mood start talking to each other about certain different things and stuff like that and because you know the internet is populated by most of gamers most of gamers will vote on things like the golden turd which is why companies like Exxon and and so on that you know even BP in their big uh, Gulf of Mexico disaster don't get voted up as much um, just because people care less about the planet and more about games it's kind of sad to say it that way but it probably is true it's not so much that I think they care more about the games than the planet, but it's like I was mentioning in my vlog yesterday, I think. Was it yesterday? No, yesterday was a QA. and a It was two days ago on Thursday's vlog. But as I was mentioning, uh, the amount of effect isn't weighed by a vote. One person's life can be completely destroyed, and they get one vote. One person's life can be slightly hindranced, and they get one vote. And while other companies like BP with the Gulf of Mexico, which is now two years ago almost, so it's not something that would have affected this year, but Exxon's oil spill or Bank of America, they affected people a lot more, but they affected less of them. And so less people have that fresh on their mind because less people were impacted, that's less votes. The votes aren't weighed by the severity of the suckage of the company. It is simply weighed by the opinion of suckage and the numbers of that. There, there. All right, guys. But while I ha I would love to sit and chit chat about EA more uh, and XCon and all those other companies, we've beaten that dead horse quite vigorously. It it's been twitching on the floor. We can always move on to other things. There's more to discuss. Hey, kitty. Hey, hey, get away from the camera. Get away from the cap. No, good kitty. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, cats are good. My dog might pay a visit a little bit later. She generally doesn't at night. She likes to sleep with my wife and all that kind of stuff. That came out totally wrong. But anyway. <laughs> Anyways, uh... yes, I'm, I'm sure um, once EA wakes up a little bit, well, we might decide to hit it with the dead horse with the hit it with the dead horse again. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but, oh, um, Dave! I actually have a real fear um, about the next gen consoles in that they're actually going to be such a level of power that either a PC components are going to have to get a lot cheaper, or b PCs won't PC gaming as a whole won't be able to live up to what the next-gen consoles will be able to do. I can see that being a fairly legitimate fear, but my first question is, what's going to happen with the next-gen consoles? Um, I don't know if you've been following the whole uh, debate on Twitter, but there's... I can't remember his name, but there's a rep from Microsoft. Yeah, Adam Orth is his name, sorry. And Adam Orth has been going on about how the new Xbox may have an always-on feature, so it needs to be always connected to the internet to run. Uh, without having internet access, it's not going to function. It'll be like a DRM protection on the Xbox. And on Twitter, a lot of people uh, were complaining, and he was just basically being very curt and dismissive, and also making jokes of it, but while he's someone who's supposed to be a higher-up representative, you don't want them making jokes like, well, if you can't afford the internet, why are you buying an Xbox, and things like that. Yeah, that has a lot of connotations. Um, for example, if I am posted in the military, I want to bring my Xbox along, along, it might not even be safe for me to have a constant internet connection in that kind of a situation. Or if I'm in an area that's remote enough that I can only get, for example, a satellite connection to the internet, I can't have an Xbox. That, uh, that to me doesn't really seem very fair. I can understand where they're coming from in that they want to keep the piracy to an absolute minimum, but what they're going to end up doing um, with any DRM technology or anything else, if you're the kind of person who doesn't want to pay for something software-wise, you can find a way to make it free. Um, the pirates that... will find a way around. It's the consumers you're hurting. Yeah, and I think uh, making it harder for the pirates, yeah, that makes sense, 
but at the same time, um, ninjas are better than pirates. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. That's why Ryo Hayabusa was my favorite character, not like Captain Long John Silver. Yeah, I think I probably would have picked a different ninja, but definitely a ninja for ninja's sake. Because ninjas are awesome. Oh, come um, on. Ninja Gaiden's like the greatest ninja. He is. You know, Ninja Gaiden was probably one of my first video game loves. For the original NES, that side-scrolling nightmare that took so much of my <gasps> oh. seven-year-old time. Oh, yes, yes, yes. But for that poor, poor game. It, it, oh, beat it, the hell it was out of really everyone. good for its time, but yeah. You know, I think that's why I'm going to get Mari to play as one of her games on pa to become a passable gamer. That, uh, I think, might go into the intermediate stage, just because um, it was also, among being one of my first loves video game-wise, was also probably one of my first rage quitters. So, um, I've actually watched some, uh, some Let's Plays and some videos where people just make the game look really easy, but uh, I think for a new gamer, that kind of platforming and fighting and that kind of stuff would be really frustrating. Yeah, I With think, my uh, coaching, she will succeed, for I am the coach. I do believe in you as a mentor. I think that she could make it there. <laughs> Anyways, we've really <laughs> sidetracked. Um, uh, pirates, what yeah. were we even talking um, about? PCs versus yeah. consoles. Yeah, I, 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 speaking of the Twitter debacle, though, there was a comment from someone who I think was from Sony. I'm not 100% sure. Or Nintendo. I can't remember which of the companies he's from. But he made a rather humorous comment, which was, sorry, didn't see your post about always on DRM, my internet was out. <laughs> that's that's actually brilliant, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I, I agree with you. I don't understand why they would need that level of DRM. It's like um, the origin program and games for it. If I can't connect to the internet, I still want to be able to play my games. You know, um, mm -hmm. even as somebody who has a dedicated cable connection, um, the ability to plug Wi-Fi into any of my or sorry, plug Ethernet into any of my consoles and my PCs. Um, I don't like that. What if I want to play my game while I'm on the plane or something like that? What am I going to do then? Uh, Origin, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah. Well, planes really now have Wi-Fi, but still it's expensive as as booger nuts. Yeah. And, you know, like, if you're like me and you're flying, you know, trans-Pacific to get home to see your family and friends like Paul, um, you're not going to get much of an internet connection while you're, you know, somewhere 600 kilometers south of Hawaii. But, yeah. Uh, well, Dave, I think this is a good point for us actually to wrap up the vlog and get started on our playing of Shogun. So, guys, make sure to check us out. Uh, check out the vlog tomorrow, and check out the Shogun 2 Total War that Dave and I have been playing. Uh, where we're at right about now, I believe we just knocked the Eco Iki out a second time because <laughs> they yes. came back from that rebellion. Yep, they came. They came back from the dead, and uh, I think we were either just about to or had already destroyed them. So, yeah, I, I know I took on their first out. forces uh, last episode on Wednesday, and I think where you and I left off is one episode later. So uh, we're actually fairly close to that point in real time. So, guys, that being said, we're actually recording fairly close to the the air date um we're right now going to go and record wednesday's episode monday's is already recorded and then we'll be going forward from there so wish us luck in the uh battles and we'll see you guys next time pleased to meet you <laughs> take care <laughs>